everybody. Thanks very much for your time this afternoon. What Fritz has been talking about is really the core business of the Economic Development Agency. So he's, he, he's right in the mainstream and doing everything that he should be doing. Um, I guess what I've been trying to do over the last month, really, is to make sure that what, what um, we're doing is capturing the best thinking, nationally and internationally, for this region. So, um, and what, and what, and the way I've been doing that, um, Will, Fritz and I spent a few days at the uh, EDANS conference and we heard, obviously, national thinking there. Then I spent the following week um, with a lot of the top economic development thinkers in the country, uh, Ganesh Nana, top economist for Bill, and um, Dr. Caroline Saunders from Lincoln University talking about agricultural sustainability. So what I've been trying to do is to work out what we're not doing, what, what we might be missing, I guess. And, um, um, Sorry. So what we, we need to think about is productive diversity. So what we have is tourism, agriculture, forestry, and energy. And um, what we see in the most developed economies is that that's not enough. We actually need more. We need different things. And this is what Sir Paul Callahan was saying as well, is we don't actually know necessarily what we're going to be good at, but we need more than just, if you like, those four kind of um, resource-based um, sectors. Now let's see if I can make this work. This graph is almost impossible to see, isn't it? But what I wanted just to show you is the top 10 companies, these represent a, um, the line of companies that make money for New Zealand. The top 10 that on the right there, which show basically the, um, the, the ones that earn the most money, those top 10 earn $3.9 billion in export earnings for New Zealand. And just to put that into context, Fonterra generates about $12 billion worth of um, export earnings. So those top 10 companies are a third of the turnover of Fonterra. And those top 10 country, companies, you probably can't see them, but they're companies that we don't, we never hear about. And they're doing really odd, weird things. They're making crystals, they're making respirators. It's really odd um, little bits of, of industry that have just come up. And we need more of those. And what Sir Paul Callahan argues is we need about an, uh, another 90 of them. And if we had another 90, we'd have an extra $40 billion worth of turnover. And we would actually be a prosperous country, the country then. So what I'm doing at the moment is working on the Regional High Growth Initiative to find a few of them here in the Lake Taupo region, because I actually believe that this is, this is how you make money. You get smart people with good ideas and you nurture them. What's really interesting in the research as well is we want those top 10 at the, at the, um, the right side making all the money, but you can't actually get them without the thousand that sit beneath them. So you have to actually cultivate a wide base of entrepreneurs before you find your top 10. So it, unfortunately, it would be great if we could just walk out and pick the winner, but we can't. We actually have to nurture sort of the entire sector. And so that's what I'm working on in a, in a kind of a, a small way here in the Lake Taupo region. Um, and this is just really following on from what Fritz was saying earlier. So um, roughly, tourism generates about $80,000 per person. Um, Fonterra generates about $350,000 per person. And we think, wow, Fonterra, that's fantastic, you know, $350,000 per person. But if we look at these businesses, which, again, is pretty hard to see, but so these are some um, international businesses. So, for example, Apple generates $1.3 million per person. Um, if we look at Fisher & Paykel Healthcare down the bottom there, they're doing about $232,000 a person, which is great, but they're right, right down at the bottom of this list. So as New Zealanders and as people from the Lake Taupo region, we have to be thinking in terms of generating more revenue per person. We have to have high value jobs. And to do that, we have to seek this productive diversity. So how are we going to do that? Um, so we've just launched this regional high growth initiative. And when I say just, I, I went in the paper on the 14th of July. So this is, this is a really uh, new little baby. And I guess I just wanted to share it with you now. Hopefully it will grow. Um, so what I'm specifically looking for, I'm looking for those top 10. But the reality is we're going to have to grow quite a few before we find our winners, I guess is fair to say. So at the moment, we're actively seeking those entrepreneurs. And I'm asking them three questions before I'll take them into the, into the initiative, essentially. The first question is, is it scalable? Is your product scalable? And by that, I mean we can make one, but can we also make a 1,000? Can we also make a million? Can we do it here in the Lake Taupo region? Can, and can we export it? So I'm looking for scalability. I'm looking for exportability. So, you know, is it something that the world actually wants from us? And does it provide high value jobs? And the businesses that I'm looking at so far, and just to give you a very quick update, eight businesses have come forward so far. And of those five are scalable and six are exportable. Um, and there's a few that, you know, don't meet that criteria, but they, they are actually there. And strangely, of the eight that have come forward, six are in manufacturing. 
one is in tourism and one is in service delivery. So actually there are manufacturers out there and they do want to help, uh, they do want help and they do, you know, they want to come forward. So I think we just need to keep looking. Just, um, I guess it would be uh, remiss of me to stand here and not make um, uh, a bit of a, um, give you some indication of where our, our organisation is at. Um, as, we, as Fritz has already said, tourism is vital for our economy here in the Lake Topol region. It's vital because it provides work. And I think it's also vital because it's the face of our community. So when people look at Topol, they see us through the eyes of tourism. And I'm here because of the tourism industry. I came here as a backpacker. I got a job at Topol Bungie. I own a, a tourism business right now. So it's an important part of our economy. But it doesn't make us wealthy. It doesn't make us rich, either as a community or as a country. So what we have to do is to get a balance in that. And I just would like to, I guess, say to you guys, you know, we're putting a lot of money into tourism as a community. So DGLT gets a substantial budget, and EGLT does not. And I guess what I'd like to say, I, I would like to ask you to invest in making us richer. Fritz, would you like to just finish this us off? Thank you, Sue. I'm uh, just going to finish up. I guess um, the uh, I talked about this one briefly last time, but um, uh, this this model works really, really well. Having all the agencies in, in one building is, is just an absolute dream because people wander in through one door and they pretty much get shunted along the way now. Like we have people coming in saying, well, I need some business assistance. What do you do while I do events? We say, well, hang on, Nick Reed is right over there. And maybe you need to talk to Kylie and then come and see me and we'll help you there. So that's really, really working very well. And just so you let you know, we are looking for new premises at the moment because the place we're in at the moment is just a little bit older and not so warm. And, um, and on the move, we are looking to keeping all those agencies together. That's pretty much us from, from us, and thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, now is a pretty good time. <coughs> okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Sue and, and Fritz. And I'll open it up to the floor for uh, questions, I guess, of either of you. Um, so, councillors, uh, very exciting um, where Enterprise Great Lake Taupo is taking our district, I believe. So uh, I know there's probably everybody would like to compliment you all, but is there any questions from anybody or anything that needs some more explanation? Councillor Mincher. That was brilliant, both of you, fantastic. And um, so for a shop front, would you be looking at like floor space, CBD sort of thing, where you're accessible on the ground floor to the, so people know where you are a bit more or not? Uh, um, we. Um, because of Town Centre Taupo, what, their mandate is that they have to be in a CBD. That, that's our only drawback. So um, we cannot afford bottom floor rent. So it's got to be somewhere upstairs. So we're having a look around at the moment. But worst case scenario, we'll, we'll stay where we are, obviously. It'd be lovely to get a better shop front for those agencies. Good to see you on a ground floor somewhere, quite frankly, because I think it's a very integral business to have in our CBD. And I don't know whether upstairs would work too well. And that sort of situation, but um, not for me to say, but um, yeah, well, I'm very excited by uh, what you've done, and, and you too, Sue, um, both of you, you know, it's really tracking along quite well, and we're getting a lot of uh, positive feedback, so I think the, the, the sky is, is is the limit in Taupo, my, my personal opinion, and, and we have that geothermal resource here, we're close to the Napier and Tauranga ports, so um, transport logistics uh, should be right up the front of the queue, I would think, but Anything further from anybody? Yeah, I just I, I did watch that um, YouTube video and very very interesting. Thank you. I mean it opened up a whole lot of uh, things that I didn't know. So your last question, Sue, I think it is quite relevant that um, we do look at that. I guess just to to just reiterate as well. I guess our budget at the moment allows us to pay my wages and and. Um, but to actually do anything, we don't have any money left to do anything. It's pretty much uh, begging, borrowing, stealing at the moment. And I have to say, industry is really stepping up and helping us out, and it's been good. Well, it's a matter of teamwork, and we are going into the LTP process shortly, so I guess we'll be seeing you back in here. Uh, well, every six months. No doubt of that. <laughs> Councillor Henderson? Um, I <coughs> just wanted to add, um, you know, congratulations on what I think is a good job that you're doing, and in particular to um, say thanks to Fritz for the effort personally that he's put in down the bottom end of the lake, I know it's really appreciated and uh, he's correct when he says that you know people see it and recognise it as being you know a great step up um, when compared to what's been done down there previously, so it's appreciated. Thank you, Rob. Just, 
Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Mia, just one other thing too. I think it's a great that all these organisations are coming together and, you know, are all open and, and vibrant together because that's one of the things that, you know, always scratched my head when I first got into the local government is, you know, all these different organisations and it's great to see, um, you know, the collaboration of all those groups together. So well done to that, um, you and your team too, Fritz, and everyone else in those different ones. Thank you. And I think it's just, just getting them around the table and getting them to talk to each other. And we've got sort of quite def defined areas that we now work in. So if someone steps up to me and says, this is what I want, I go, sorry, not me, there. So rather than duplicating and doing it again, it just doesn't make any sense. That's why we're quite focused on where we want to be. Okay, well, on behalf of uh, all the councillors here, um, thank you very, very much to both of you. A brilliant presentation and, uh, yeah, a lot of good ideas coming in there. So I would ask uh, someone to move the suggested resolution that's on your page one that the information be received and the representatives of Enterprise Great Lake Taupo Trust be thanked for their presentation. Move Councillor Downard, second to Councillor Kirk, all in favour. Aye.